Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 8. We are going to be doing Proposition 8, and Proposition 8 is basically saying if we have two numbers, a and b, that their ratio are equal to two other numbers, e and f, and in between a and b we have a number of numbers, in our case or example, c and d, such that they are in continuous proportions. In other words, a is to c, as c is to d, as d is to b. If we want to be more generic, we can look at a series where a is to s1, which is s1 to s2, etc. This proposition states, again, that if a to b is equal to e to f, uh, if there is a series of numbers that are in continuous proportions from a to b, there will be the same number of numbers that are in continuous proportions from e to f. So this is what it is that we are trying to demonstrate. So again, we're starting off with a to b is equal to e to f, and there's two numbers c and d such that a, c, d, b are proportional. So using the propositions or the methods described in Proposition 33 of Book 7, we're going to come up with a series of numbers, g, h, k, and l, that are the least numbers that are proportional and are equal to a to b would be equal to g to f. Now, since g, h, k, and l are the least numbers in a proportional series, according to Proposition 3 of Book 8, g and l are relatively prime. Now, g, h, k, l and a, c, d, b are, by definition, the same length. So, because they are the same length, we have basically that the extremities a to b is equal to the ratio of g to l. Proposition 14 of Book 7. So we have a to b is equal to e to f, a to b is equal to g to l, so consequently g and l and e to f are also equal. Now we know that g and l are relatively prime, which means that um, they are the least numbers in that ratio. So g and l are the least numbers in that ratio. And we have that e and f is equal to g of l. So g and l are the least. Now, according to Proposition 20 of Book 7, since g and l are the least numbers to create that particular ratio, then g will measure e and l will measure f by the same number. So we have e is equal to some number p times g, and f is equal to, again, p times l. Now let's create two new numbers, m and n, such that m is equal to p times h. So we have, remember we have e is equal to p times g, so we're going to create a number m where it's p times h, k, which is, sorry, n, which is p times k. So we have E, M, and F, and they are all equal multiples of G, H, K, and L. So we have that G, H, K, and L are um, the same proportions as E, M, and F, according to definition 20 of book 7. We had that A, B, C, D was equal to G, H, K, L. We have that G, H, K, L, G, H, K, L, excuse me, is equal to E, M, and F. So consequently, A, B, C, D is equal to E, M, and F. So if we have two numbers, A and B, that have a set of numbers making a series of proportional numbers, and if A to B is equal to F, we can construct another series from E to F of the same number of numbers that are in proportion. 
And that is the um, what that is what we were trying to prove.